Welcome at this second presentation on PLC Open Safety. This one is more dedicated to the state machines, and we'll explain you more on that one, and the architectural models that we use. My name is Ilko van der Wall, and I'm the managing director of the organization PLC Open, and I will guide you through this presentation. The first step is how to read a state machine. And for that one, I go a little bit back to the function block e-stop, emergency stop. Here's the graphical representation. You see the inputs with the names and the data times on the left and the outputs on the right and the name on top of that one. This has a timing diagram coupled to it. And if you look to the bottom of the timing diagram, you see the dire codes and the dire codes are re related to the states that it's in. So this is the state diagram from the function block emergency stop. Be aware that normally you do not have to implement these state machines. This is what your supplier of the function block does. So this is more to learn, to understand, unless of course you are the supplier and you need to implement this. And one note to that one is that we did a shorter representation, especially in the reset behavior. So you see on the left side here, reset and not R trick as reset. So you enter a function block and the reset is set. Somebody's leaning on the button or a book is lying on it. So you have a reset error. Yeah? And you have to wait till the book is removed on the switch. And so we do represent that very shortly on the right side. And this reset behavior is compliant also to the ISO 13849 where you have, in this case, the rising edge and falling edge as the error detection part. Getting back to that one. You see the function block here with the start reset, auto reset, the reset as inputs, and of course the e-stop in. But first of all, you activate the whole thing. So that's just what we do on top. We activate the function block and we get to the state 8001 in it. And there are three ways of getting out of there. One, two, and three. Not start reset or e-stop in and start reset, start reset and not in e-stop in. And they guide us through three phases. The first one goes immediately to the safe state. E-stop out is true. Safety output enabled. The other one waits for the e-stop. And if the stop in gets there, we wait for the reset and with the R trick the rising edge, we get to the safe output. With reset, there can be a reset error, of course. And if E stop in is switched off, we wait again for the E stop in. So this is the one and the two from priority. A reset error is always priority one. The other one is S start reset and not E stop in. So what you get here is we wait for e stop in. We enter the 8804. And if e stop in is there and there is not an auto reset, we wait for the reset. There can be a reset error, priority one. Or if the reset gets there, the R check at reset or auto reset, we move to the safe state. The shortcut is there is an e stop in and there is an auto reset. Then we immediately go here. There's one way out, as you see here, one, not e-stop in. We remove the e-stop in and we wait again for e-stop in. The next example is on muting. And muting, we suppress the safety functionality. Think about moving a car body into the production line. But we only want to move the car body safely in. And if somebody's walking behind it, then everything should stop and should move to the safe state. Look here to parallel muting. For parallel muting, we have two sets of sensors. And this is the light curtain. That is the, the safety functionality that we want to, to mute, suppress. So the car body gets in. It, it locks the first two sensors. There can be a time difference. Can be first one and then two. There's a little time discrepancy that we check. 
Yeah. Then it moves in, it goes into the through the light curtain, which is still okay because it's not in a danger zone. And before he touches, he uh, unblocks the these two sensors, he blocks the second pair of sensors. And also there, it can be that he blocks the first one a little bit faster than the second one. So we want a time discrepancy here. And we want a time evaluation about the whole trajectory of moving in. These are all checkpoints for us. Yes. And then it can go out and he unblocks those. And we know that it is the right product, the car body, and it gets into the danger zone. So the positioning of these sensors is crucial in that sense. Yeah? So in that way, it can detect it's a car body over its length and it's not a person, for instance, walking in. This is the parallel muting function block. You see the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. And you see the muting switches, four pieces. The discrepancy times between the switching on of those and the max muting time of the whole process. Yeah, muting enable, start, reset, reset. The AOPD is the active optoelectronic protective device. This is where we are looking to. This is where we're moving on. Yeah. And of course, here you get the relevant outputs. So, this is the whole state machine, state diagram. You see that it's especially a little bit more complex. Here's the power off, here's the power on, we are moving in the process, and here are all these checks if the conditions are okay. And if not, we immediately go back to an unsafe state. If this is the car body, it's all safe. If it's not the car body, we move out here again and lock it. So, power on, we get to an init, there can be a a parameter error, if one of those is not set correctly, we stop the program, somebody has to really reprogram something there. Yeah, so this is a really bad, bad error. There can be a reset or error as high as priority, and if that's okay, and we get an Artwig at reset, or we have to start reset done, we get to 8002, which we call safe. And for that one, we got two ways out. One is the not ASOP, there is no safety demand yeah, in that case. So we have to wait for that one and wait for the reset. Or, and then we go down, there is a request there. We move to the AOPD free 8000, the save mode, and then we check the whole muting sequence. So you see here muting condition one, muting condition two, Muted condition three that goes directly here, and muted condition four. Muted condition one moves to two bubbles. We move them into one for clarity, but the 8010 and 8310. So you can come out of those two to the 8020. You either go from 8010 to 8020 or the 8310 to 8020 under muted condition two. So muted condition one, the first switch is is blocked, you start the timing, max muting time, and the discrepancy time. Yeah? And we wait, of course, till the other one is done. It can also be that the second sensor is first switched on. Yeah? We start the timers again, the muting process and the discrepancy time, and we wait there. Muting condition two from 8010, from 8310, now they're both set. And muted condition three is the quicker one. Both entry switches actuated at the same cycle. There is no time discrepancy there. So we start the Mac muting timer and we wait for the whole process. Muted condition four, where all switches are actuated, this is the situation there. So let's go back there. So we look to this one. It either goes to 8010 or 8310, depending on which one is sooner, or if they are not go into here. Both sensors are actu actuated here. You saw the muting condition 4 in that case. They're all set here. Now, there's a muting condition 24 to 8030, there's a muting condition 24 to 8330, and there are muting conditions 25 either to this one or this one, depending 
which one of these switches is switched off first. We're going out of it now. We really go into the danger zone. And in the end, muting condition five, the whole product is not in it. There are not, no sensors blocked. So this is muting condition four. This is here, 24, 25. They're all unblocked. And muting condition five brings us back into this one. So the whole process is done. The body is inside. All sensors are unblocked. And we are waiting for the next one to be able to enter. We can do the same process going backwards. So something is, is wrong and we want to move the car body out. Then it, it can be halfway and, and we want to take it out back again. So this is the a similar procedure, I would say, and I don't want to go into details here, but it's a similar way, but then in this case, we take it out before it really entered the danger zone. The next topic is architectural models. You saw this one already, where you have your standard inputs and standard outputs and your functional application besides the safety application that has its safety inputs, its safety outputs, and its safety runtime environment. Now, if I go a little bit more into detail there, because of these two arrows, you see with the red one that you actually have an interface to the safety application, either standard inputs, non-process, or processed. It can be, but we have to be careful there. So an alternative representation is we have a sensor, the hardware input, controller, hardware output going to the actuator. We have an input monitoring, input pre-processing. We got all the logic here in the program, and we got an output monitoring to go through the actuator part. Now, if we go that even a little bit more deeper, you see that we have different layers. The safety inputs, the safety outputs, they are now vertically oriented. We've got safety inputs, we got the safety PLC part, and we got the safety outputs linked to the actuators. It's on the top, we got the safety sensors, we got an input level, we got the input processing level, and this is not part of what PLC Open is doing. This is part of your embedded software and your hardware here. Then you get to the safety application software. And there you see that in the pre-processing, we have identified the function blocks, the specified the function blocks, abstracting and monitoring of safety sensors. Yeah? This is the pre-processing. There can be additional function blocks defined by the supplier. This is where you create your program. So this is your work. And there's post-processing where we have identified function blocks too. And that can be that there are additional function blocks provided by your supplier. And on the bottom, see that this is where the output processing is, embedded software again, and the hardware. And there you get to your actuator parts. Pre-processing the logic and the post-processing. But the certification of your program is outside of what we deliver. We help you to create your program, but if your program is okay, another party has to be involved there. That's why it's not yellow here. Now, there are several ways of running your application program. One is there's one net network. If you're pre-processing, your safety function, your logic there, and your post-processing all in one program. There are several options. One is you have one network. So if within one program, the pre-processing, the logic, and the post-processing. It can also have that you do that in different networks. You still have the same programs, but it's different identities in that sense. They are not connected. They are different networks. Same result, a little bit different uh, structuring of your program. You also can create a program that does the calling of the function block instances. So in the pre part, you call the function block that are used for the pre-processing. For the logic that you created, you call all the function block that are defined for, in, for your logic. 
And in the post-processing, you call those function blocks that are defined for the post-processing. So it's one program calling the instances. Again, a little bit little different structure, but in the end, the same result. And then we can create multiple programs for pre, for the logic, and for the post that exchange their data via global variables. So now we run three programs. It's a sequence of programs within the same task, of course. It's again a little bit different structure. And that's what I wanted to show you. There are several ways of dealing with this. Field show and safety allows the user to achieve functional safety at the machine and plant level. We are more, more focused to machine. But nevertheless, this is what we, we want to be able to achieve functional safety easily for you. So you save time, you save cost, you get less errors. And your program is much more transparent. So easier to certify by the right bodies. The basis of PLC Open is to combine the logic, the motion, and the safety. And with that one, we provide structuring and decomposition, providing reuse and less training. And on top of that one, we added communication via OPC OA, exchange via XML, and training guidelines to help you, very much like this. The reason for this is in our tagline. We want to provide you efficiency in automation. And that's what we try to achieve here. For this, we need your help too. So join us in our working groups, give us feedback on our documents, help us there, join the organization. For more information, check our website. You can subscribe to a newsletter. And if you want to get in contact with me, this is my email address. Thank you very much for watching. More movies are, will become available, so keep in contact. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.